know we're going to cover a lot of ground. So, um, guys, we are really, really fortunate today um, to have Jay White come join us. Um, he, um, this is all part of the speaker series that I have shared with you guys. And that's you know, one of the benefits of us having the relationship we have with, with Valentine. And so he's been speaking out across, I guess, out in Colorado and in different market centers there. And where else? In Arizona? Colorado, Phoenix, uh, St. Louis, Kansas City, Phoenix, 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 and then all throughout Carolina. And he has just been a huge hit. I mean, so many people say he just speaks the language of agents. And so I'm so excited that he said he would come to our market center and deliver this message to you guys. Um, and this is just all part of, you know, what we want to do to continue to, 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 to raise the level and help take your business wherever you may want to take it. And so um, Jay's background is, gosh, I don't know, what did you do before you were in real estate, Jay? Uh, well, so in college I ran a restaurant and bar, and then when I got out of school I was finance until I found out I didn't like cubicles. <laughs> <laughs> it showed up pretty quick for me. So he's, um, I know he was uh, formerly an, an agent from uh, an, a, another company, um, mm -hmm. a, a CB agent. I came from that company, so, you know. And then he, oh, I don't pull punches. I'll tell you what I can. Okay, so he's going to give you all, all those details and all. But he has built an enormous business. He is the PC coach over in Ballantyne, runs that entire program there. He still runs a very strong business on top of that. He also is in a couple other cities, too. You have agent expansion in other yeah, cities. so we're in the high country, and we're in Charleston, and we're getting ready to launch in Raleigh. And you've done all this in what period of time? How many years? I've been with Keller Williams since uh, December 2010. So, guys, he did all this in six years. Isn't that cool? So, I'm going to get off the stage. I don't want to hear me. And I'll let, uh, and let uh, Jane do his thing. And then we have some guests I know here. Um, does, would anybody raise their hand they'd like to be introduced? Because some guests want to be introduced, some don't. Well, I have one we're going to introduce, whether you like it or not. You're, you're going to be introduced here in a minute by Jay. But anybody else? Okay, great. Enjoy. How are you guys doing this morning? Great. Hello. Good. Uh, so my name is Jay White, and I'll get into my background a little bit. I do want to introduce one of my good friends uh, who came this morning. So it's a little different, a uh, little different kind of pressure on me. Normally, I'm in the uh, in the room with a bunch of real estate agents, and that's pretty cool. I'm in my comfort zone. But this morning, uh, one of my fraternity brothers is here. He owns an insurance company here in town. So I'll let him introduce himself real quick. But Jack Wingate. Hey, my name is Jack Wingate. Um, Brother, I actually own an agency in Greensboro. I'm just opened my satellite in Clemens because I've been driving from Clemens to Greensboro for since '04. So um, my kids actually go to the school down the street at uh, NCLA. Um, so I still have to make that journey. It's an <laughs> odd one. Um, but now I reached out to Jay a little while back and said, "Hey, I'd like to know because I see all these postings from Keller Williams people." I said, "Let me know what the business is about." just because I might be able to transfer that over to, to my industry. So um, I'm the guy with the big beard. It, it, it just happens. Actually, I'm getting a haircut today and it's going down. So um, <laughs> thanks for letting me be here. No, thank you, man. Um, so I don't like marketing names, but this class, the only thing we could come up with was two jobs, 200 sales. Um, and this is my path to success. It's, I think all of others are a little bit different, but this is my journey, and I'll be happy to share some things. And if anything can translate over, then that's kind of what this is all about. Um, so the background on this, and, and I'll get into it a little bit, was when the market crashed in Charlotte, I had to go get a second job when I was with another company. Um, they didn't teach us a whole lot at the other company about how to, how to insulate yourself during a shift, how to... Um, how to grow a business and make it a business. It wasn't, you know, this is not about selling houses. This is about owning a business, and I didn't understand that. So we're going to talk about that. Um, and so we should hit 200 sales next year. Um, we're at about 160 this year. Our goal was 210, so we're going to fall a little bit short. Um, but what I've learned is falling short of a really big goal is not as bad as succeeding with a really small goal. And so we'll talk a little bit about that today, too. Um, so here's a little bit of information about me. I was born in Charlotte. Um, I like to say I was born and bred in Charlotte, but I lived in Knoxville, Tennessee, in Duluth, Georgia, outside of Atlanta. Uh, and 
I attended actually Georgia Southern University first, <clears throat> played basketball there until I got hurt, uh, tore my knee up, and transferred to Appalachian State because my parents decided that, yeah, no, I love ASU. Um, my parents decided that Georgia Southern education wasn't worth paying out of state tuition for. Uh, which I completely agree with now. <laughs> I wasn't really happy about it then. Uh, so here's some awards that um, that either have bestow been bestowed upon me or our team, and I'm really proud of some of these. But um, this year I was nominated or named one of the most 100 uh, most influential real estates in North Carolina. Real Trends named us uh, best real estate agents, top 1,000 broker nominee. KWRI, uh, we won the Platinum Award last year. I've won the Eagle Award for our market center and five-star real estate agent, and customer satisfaction by Charlotte Magazine. So those are some, those are some of the things we talk about. Um, on the right side, those are some of the things I've been able to accomplish since I've been at Keller Williams. I've been on the Agent Leadership Council every year except last year. Um, I came off last year because my dad wanted an opportunity, and our policy in our market center is only one representative per team, so he did it for for us last year, and then he decided it was too much work. <laughs> so I jumped back on this year. Uh, and then next year I won't be uh, able to be on it because I'm staff now, so my brother will be on it. Um, I'm a mega agent, uh, an expansion team owner. We have, we're have we already operating in the high country. Our first year up there, we were the number, one, uh, number two agent in that market center. We're really proud of that. Uh, we've been in business about 75 days in Charleston. We have one closing and two in the pipeline, so we're, we're active there already. Um, and we're getting ready to launch in Raleigh. So that's something that we're, we're extremely proud of. I'm a KWU certified instructor, I'm a MAPS coach, and I'm an investor with Keller Williams United Kingdom. And in August 1st, I became the director of productivity for Valentine. Um, so I run our productivity coaching program and then coach one of the groups. And we can get into that if you want to. Um, all this is not to say woohoo, I'm a big, big shot or anything. The reality is, is though I do think I have some credibility. So my background, I started in real estate in 2006 with Cole Banker. Consistently sold about two to three million dollars a year. I was on the corporate relocation team and then 2008 happened. And this is what 2008 looks like in Charlotte. So October 3rd, 2008, Wachovia and Wells Fargo merged. January 2009, unemployment hit 10.9%. Bank of America stock went to $2.53 from about $20 the day before to give you an idea. Uh, Citigroup stock went under $1. Unemployment peaked in uh, January 2010 at 12.9%. You guys are probably familiar with some of these numbers, right? I mean, it, I'm sure it affected you as well. But that's what real estate looked like in a matter of six months in Charlotte. And with as many bank executives as we have in Charlotte, guess who got hurt worst, right? Like. Um, what happens is a lot of the jobs that were coming into and out of Charlotte were not necessarily with the bank, but they were financial service jobs supporting the banks. And so all of a sudden, they don't have jobs, then their homes go into foreclosure or short sale or whatever. It just became pretty ugly pretty quick for us. So that's what that looks like. So um, I went back to what I knew best. Um, I ran a what could only be described as a dive bar in college. Uh, if any of you are familiar with Boone, it's Klondike Cafe. <laughs> Across from the Convocation Center, there's a hole in the wall. We paid off the health department every year to get our inspection. That's, that's how we roll. But what I was good at, I learned more running that bar than I did in college. I'm pretty certain of that. Um, so anyway, I, I went into an upscale restaurant in Charlotte. Um, and I just got lucky, I timed it right. I said, uh, my dad and I had a conversation. He said, hey, I don't like where this is headed. And there's uh, two of us in this business and one of us has job skills that they can get a job with and one of us is me. <laughs> and so that was my aha, is I needed, I probably, I didn't know if I needed it or not, but I knew I better hedge my bet. So I was literally in the parking lot of 131 Main and called my wife and said, hey, I think I'm gonna go in and apply for a job. And she was like, excuse me? Like, it was an aha to her, too. Um, but it allowed me to keep my job in real estate. It allowed me to continue to sell houses. Uh, I would work at night and then sell houses during the day. And I thought I could make some decent money so that our lifestyle didn't change. So that's really the reason I did it. 
Um, about that time, I read the real estate uh, millionaire real estate agent book for the second time. I had read it, but I really didn't read it. Anybody in that book? So I read it again. I read Shift. Um, I noticed that most of my coal banker friends had left coal banker. And this is all like in a really short period of time. And most of them went to Keller Williams. And so I started asking why. Well, most of them went for profit share. And we'll, we'll talk about this, some of this stuff. But uh, most of them went for profit share. So I took a meeting with Ann Young. She was the team leader at Keller Williams Valentine then. And, um, and a meeting went really well. And I knew where I wanted to go. But my dad is at, he's like on the very front end of the baby boomer generation, the very back end of like World War II kind of generation. Um, and so his motto to me is if I, had, if, I was, if I had enough time to go do this and meet with other people and the grass is always greener, right? If I had enough time to do that, then I just need to work harder. Like put my head down. And I was like, yeah, so that's, that sounds stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so I told Ann, I said, look, we will come over here I will come over here one way or the other, but I think I can get him. But um, when we have this meeting, do not try to close him. Let me do that. If you do, he'll push back. And the, the funny thing is, is after that meeting, we went. To, uh, I think we went out to grab a bite to eat or something, or maybe went back over to his house. I don't really remember. And I said, "So what do you think?" And he goes, "Well, I think we need to go." I was. I mean, I was floored. I was, I was prepared for a pretty big fight. And um, he said, but I'm thinking that we need, and this is like right around Thanksgiving. And he said, um, he said, so what's your timetable? And I was like, well, as soon as possible. And he goes, so like March? And I was like, or, yeah, or tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they, they made it easy. We gave back 18 listings. Uh, that we weren't allowed to take with us, and um, some of them were probably a good thing, uh, especially that time. Um, but anyway, it was it was a really good move for us, um, except for the fact that the first year in real estate at Keller Williams, we had one closing in the first six months, and I remember going, "Okay, what just happened? Like this is really scary for me." Um, so this is. On the right, you'll see this is kind of our org chart. I know it's not much of an org chart, but uh, it was me and my dad. And he worked buyers, and I worked both. Um, but we had one close in the first six months, and I started asking people. I was like, look, I'm in trouble here. I need to figure this out. Uh, my dad has some retirement. He's got VA benefits. He can, he can, he'll be all right. I've got a family to feed. Um, so I went around, and I started asking people, hey, you're having some success. What do you attribute that to? And the, the common denominator is two or three of the agents that were about my age and about my production level that were starting to make some noise, the common denominator was they had a coach. And so I was like, great, who is it? And it was Chip Walton, who happens to be our team leader now. But this was before we had a productivity coach uh, or anything like that. He was just coaching some agents in the office. And so I asked him, I said, hey, do you have five minutes to sit down and talk? I, I, I'd really like to talk to you about coaching. He goes, well, yeah, I mean, we can talk about it, but the only schedule I, or the only opening I've got on my schedule is 7.30 on Thursday morning. I said, great, that works for me. I'm not a morning person, by the way. <laughs> I've learned to become one. Um, so I sat down with him and said, hey, I need a coach. I need to figure this out, and I need some help, and I know I can't figure it out on my own. And Chip said, okay, great. I said, the only thing is I can't afford to pay you. <laughs> so I was like, I do, I'm broke. I can't afford to pay you. He goes, well, I'm sure we can figure something out. You've got some tech skills. So I built his eEdge site and set up his eEdge, built all his groups and set up his marketing and, and then managed his social media. And that was his trade off. I think he would have done it for free anyway. <laughs> I think it was more for my benefit than it was for his to make me feel like I was earning it. Um, so we ended the year strong, ended up closing 3.9 million. I was able to quit my job at 131 Main um, and really concentrate on real estate. So it's kind of funny, that was our smallest year uh, in production since we've been here, but it was probably the one that got me started on the right track because I got a coach. 
and they would they, my coaches have always pushed me more than I probably could push myself. So that's 2011. 2012, um, we ended up doing 40 units, 8.9 million, or 7.9 million, 228 DCI. Uh, and then we grew a little bit. We hired my sister to be our part-time admin, <laughs> virtually. Um, so her background was she was the vice president of a PR firm that represented mining and mineral companies. And her boss, it was a very small shop. Uh, it was her, her boss, and his daughter. Her boss had a massive, massive stroke and died the next day. Wow. And in six months, the business went bankrupt. Mm. So she was out on her own with a newborn. Her husband's a financial planner in Charleston. And so she wanted to, she was trying to figure out what she wanted to do. And I said, look, we need some help at this point. And I'm not ready to hire somebody full time. And you could work from home and you already know our systems and when you had to come to Charlotte we've got somewhere for you to stay and like it was a hard sell job <laughs> um, but that's when we first got a little bit of leverage and once I got a taste of leverage it was like okay I like this a lot because uh, I was literally closing everything I was doing it all um, so that was 2012 2013 we ended up 68 16.9 so, uh, million 449 GCI uh, we hired a buyer's agent. You'll, um, you guys might, some of you might know her name. Uh, Jessica Pegg was our first buyer's agent. She's now the assistant team leader at Valentine and has a $20 million, $25 million team. Um, she's the only person that ever came off our team, but she went up, ended up doing her own. And I, I'll show you what she did in my profit share later if you want to know. Um, so it, it was a really good fit. She lasted for about four or five months. and. Um, and said, hey, I'm ready to go do this on my own. And I was like, okay, you're not ready to do this on your own. <laughs> but if you want to, I will help you. Like, how, whatever you need. And she came to me about three weeks later and I ended up having to make a mortgage plan for her. But that's, I mean, honestly, I think that's just, she's my people, right? Like, that's how you take care. She's one of my best friends. Um, she actually, when I went to 131 Main, she trained me on the bar. That's how I do her. <laughs> and so, like, We've been in the foxhole together, so to speak. Um, so anyway, that's, that's what our team looked like in 2013. 2014, we grew to 81 units. Uh, this is what I call the mistake year, and I'll, I'll explain that. So we ended up 81 units, 21 million. You notice we didn't grow all that much, 544K GCI. I became KWU certified. In December 14, we ended up launching our first expansion, which was the mountains. Uh, but my mistake was I hired this guy to be, what I needed to hire was an executive admin, right? But in a, a true EA. And I hired a guy, brought him down, moved him down from DC, um, and he convinced me that he could do the EA job, but that that was kind of beneath him and that he would help me grow the business. So instead of following the model, I kind of did my own thing. So I hired him and then brought on a new buyer's agent I uh, actually brought on three new buyers agents. One was with us at Cole Banker, uh, one was a brand new agent, and then one, the bottom one was a brand new agent as well. But what happened is, were any of you guys at Family Reunion when Dave Ramsey was talking about not let, what was his big thing there? When you're bringing people into your organization, don't let crazy in the door. Yeah. <laughs> we let crazy in the door. And when we let crazy in the door, he turned somebody else crazy. Uh, so it was, it was a mistake. They were with us about eight months, and in eight months, I had to go back and fix a lot of the stuff that they did. Uh, so he ended, up, he ended up turning one of the buyer's agents into a cancer also. And so we let them both go. Like literally, this is kind of a funny story now. Um, I hired an executive admin and got her on board. And she knew what was going to happen. I was going to let them both go. So she got up to speed quickly. Um, the Friday that we were leaving to go to Orlando for family reunion, literally I walked in. We had a team meeting scheduled. So I walked in told the two of them I needed to meet with them, let them go, lock the door, and went to family reunion. I was like, that's just what I did. Not right or wrong, it's just, it was, it was one of those things where it was just, it was hard and easy, timing-wise. 
Um, so I got four days to go be with my people to kind of get over the deal. So um, that was what I call the mistake year. The next year was the fix it year. Uh, you see Lynn Marshall is our executive assistant. She has 20 years of experience in real estate. Uh, her mom and sister had a real estate team. Um, her mom's one of our investors. And <coughs> Susan, um, her sister, had been battling breast cancer for like eight years. And so the team wasn't functioning anymore. She took a job on staff at the market center. Um, but she really missed the, the real estate team business, if that makes sense. So um, she, she talked to our team leader right around the same time that we were actually looking for one and they put us together. It's been a really good fit. Uh, she hired Haley. Haley, is, Haley was a 22 year old college grad from UNCC that's like tiny, tiny, like cute as a button, tiny as could be, had this little like pixie voice. I mean, <laughs> she was so much fun though. She was high energy. She would go door knocking every Friday with our sales team and people loved her. Um, so she left us last October when she got married. Her husband took a job in Columbia, so they're an hour and a half away. And it just didn't make sense for us to be that, that far away. Um, we added my brother. Uh, my brother was a uh, top agent in the high country for like five or six years. He was consistently doing around $2 million. And when expansion launched, I was like, okay, this is going to be good. I'm going to be able to get him to Keller Williams now. He can brand himself with, you know, us, my family. So the white group launched in the high country. And he went from, it's kind of funny, he went from no rent and 100% commission split. Um, and he was really struggling with that. And I was like, so the reality is all I got to do is find you a million dollars. And it makes, it, it's an even draw at that point, right? Like I got to put a million dollars in sales in your pocket. That's about 30,000 in commission just to cover the difference. He's like, yeah, if you can do that, I'm in. So he did 5.2 his first year with Keller Williams. We were finding more referrals for him than we were for Charlotte. Because everybody knows an agent in Charlotte, no one knows anybody up there. So as I'm teaching throughout the Carolinas and started talking about being up there, it's kind of funny. I, would, I was expecting people to come up at the end of class and go, wow, I really like the way you take care of people. We've got referrals we'd love to send you in Charlotte. And that just wasn't happening, but everybody was going, hey, I know someone with a piece of property in Boone, or that wants a mountain house, or something like that. So that showed up really quickly for us. <coughs> um, the same year, and you'll notice we had some changeover. Jessica had a baby, and she left one of our buyer's agents, and then we got rid of the cancer. Um, and we hired, Kay stayed with us. We hired Katie Beatty, who actually lived across the street from us in Knoxville, Tennessee, and was our college roommate. And she kept telling us we had to hire Christina Brown. We had to hire Christina Brown. We had to hire Christina Brown. And Christina lives in Concord, which is not really our market. Uh, most of our business is in a triangle, very small triangle in South Charlotte. And I kept, I was really struggling with this. Like I was trying not to hire her. <laughs> and finally everybody just said, look, you have to hire her. She's a former teacher. She's wired just like we are. And so culturally, it was a really good fit. I just didn't understand why we were going to start trying to sell houses in Concord. Uh, but it was a really, really good fit. We ended up at 107 units, $30 million, 835 GCI. This was a really cool year for me. That's when I became a MAPS coach, and that's when I got invited to Gary's Masterminds. Um, it'd be really foolish of me to sit here and say, if you ever get an opportunity to go, you should. But if you ever get an opportunity to take a class from somebody in Gary's Masterminds, go. Right? And they don't usually advertise that, but if you know somebody that's in Gary's Masterminds and they're teaching or doing something like this, go, because they have different insight than a lot of people have. Um, and then that leads us to 2016. So through October, we're 119 units. Um, I think we're gonna end up around 150. For, we'll end up around 40 million. We'll end up around 1.15, 1.2 million GCI. Um, and I became the director of productivity for Valentine. So this is kind of my background. This is what my org chart looks like now. It grew a lot. Uh, that was a huge aha for me, is I was trying to recruit someone to an org chart like this, and they couldn't see what opportunity looked like down the road. So when I got into expansion, 
They talk to us a lot about filling out what our org chart's gonna look like, and then hiring to it. Um, so the red is people that we have now, blue is either future or in the works. Green is passive income. So the idea is to get as much as you can of it in green, right? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's what our O chart looks like now. And so we've got huge opportunities and it's kind of fun now to like, for instance, the expansion partner stuff's at the bottom on the right. And it's interesting, we had um, our partners in Charleston, he goes, so I'm gonna sell houses down here and I'm gonna give you half of my money. I'm not seeing the win-win opportunity here. And so then I started talking to him about being a director and actually running like an area director and running four or five locations. And what that could look like financially, working three or four days a week. And that got his attention. So you see what I'm saying about hiring to the org chart or the potential of an org chart versus, I'm looking for another buyer's agent, right? It just looks diff way different. So that was, that was a huge thing I learned. Um, these are some of the keys to my path, and again, I realize everybody has different ones, but five years from now, you'll be the sum of the people you talk to and the books you read. So who are you hanging out with and what are you reading? Um, Dick Dillingham told me E to P is the most important of the six personal perspectives, because when you think about it, all of them are E to P. Right, 80-20 rules, being more purposeful around the 20%. Does that make sense? Um, it's a very small world when you talk to people. When you find out who they are, where they're from, what kind of common interests you have, it's really, really small. Especially with social media. There's a good chance you know somebody that I know in this room. Um, the next one is you should have life goals. Right? It's okay to fall short on, the reason I never put a bucket list together is because I was like, well, it's a bunch of stuff that I'm probably never gonna do. But then I realized how important it is to have something to shoot for. So I put a list together, and I really thought I was going to struggle with it, and in five minutes I had like 40 things on it. It was really fun. It was a really cool exercise. If you ever get a chance to go to Quantum Leap, you should go. Um, most of us, and this is a Gary Keller quote, most of us overestimate what we can accomplish in one year and underestimate what we can accomplish in five years. I remember MAPS had a statistic that anybody that's been in coaching with MAPS for five years They've had 100% of their coaching clients that stayed in MAPS for five years is over a million dollars GCI. And that was when I was like 200,000, and I'm sitting here going, great, I'm gonna be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is my fifth year, and we'll be 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2. Um, and then Lyndon McKissick kept saying this, and I finally, just, I finally just wrote it down, and it's so true. The magic happens outside your comfort zone. Right? Trust your gut, trust your instincts, but the reality is, is that our instincts tend to keep us in our comfort zone, and you have to be purposeful in going outside of those to grow. Now, the rest of this is about you guys. So I don't have any more slides. What is it you guys want to talk about? <coughs> awesome, so we're done here. No, <laughs> leverage. Yes, leverage, okay. What do you want to talk about leverage? Um, where to start? Okay, so have you read The Millionaire Real Estate Agent? Yes. So where does it say start? Or the ad with you. Well, yeah. we're past that. Once you get the admin, where do you go from there? Second admin? Second. Okay. Yeah, no, a lot of us build it backwards. <laughs> and I really didn't understand that until I got in Gary's group. And Gary explains it very differently than I'd ever heard it be explained. So what a lot of people do is they say, all right, I've got all this business, and I'm doing all this other stuff, wouldn't it be easier to just take buyers off my plate? And the reality is, is yes, it would be easier just to take buyers off your plate and get a buyer's agent, but you look at the profitability difference between a buyer's agent and an admin, and that's where it makes a huge difference in your bottom line. Because mm -hmm. if you want to reinvest in your business, it's a lot easier to hire a $25,000 or $30,000 admin, even if it's part-time, than it is to hire a buyer's agent who, guys look, there's very few buyer's agents who bring business to the table. Most of them just take business that you're handing them. So essentially it's a 50% reduction in profit. The minute, on that side of the business, the minute you hire one. Yeah. So, 
I mean, there's a lot of things you can do leverage-wise. Mm -hmm. You can go virtual, you can go in-house, you can do a lot of things, right? I've seen it as low as data entry.